So I've been in the GitHub Copilot trial for C++ for quite a while now. And this example here is what completely blew my mind. So I've been working for a different project on an AI for Connect4. So nothing too fancy and I also don't want to get into the details too much. But what, imp what is important is this. The algorithm uses something called Q-learning. And Q-learning um, is basically a reinforcement algorithm. But the algorithm needs to know when it is learning. So there's always something like a state inside that tells the algorithm when it is actually learning. And this is here what absolutely blew my mind because I have the, been defining this class here and the class is just named something like connect for uh, player and it has a queue in its name probably and it has an unordered map and this one is also just called queue. So and here GitHub Copilot did this for me. I wanted to define now this bool whether the algorithm is learning and that's why I type something like bool is and then GitHub Copilot tells me is learning. And I can accept it because it's the right thing to do at this point. But what is really amazing here is that there is basically no information whatsoever how this variable could be named. And just by some weird magic in the algorithm uh, out of this that there is a queue and probably also this unordered map because it's fairly common um, just by that the algorithm of copilot deduces that is learning is probably what I want to write here and I find it absolutely amazing because this goes far beyond anything that any other competition for code has ever been done for me so it's really understanding what I'm doing here hi and welcome to my channel we are going over GitHub Copilot today. So in addition with C++, there is already lots of content out there for other languages, but also for C++, GitHub Copilot worked like magic. So a lot of the reviews out there look a little bit fabricated and that's why I show you today real examples that I came across over the last few weeks while just using GitHub Copilot during my normal work and uh, really uh, giving you real life examples for that. So where to get GitHub Copilot? Um, GitHub Copilot is still in a te technical review phase. So it means that you can register and if you're lucky, um, you will get an email anytime in the future that you're allowed to use GitHub Copilot if you allow them to basically review and uh, send all the telemetry of your code. So you need to sign up and if you sign up, then you need to have something like a uh, plugin. So if you're like me and using Visual Studio Code um, in the extensions, you find uh, the GitHub Copilot. Um, yeah, GitHub Copilot. And you need to install this. And the important um, thing here is that uh, you need to have this email where they send you the, the code to register because otherwise you won't be able to use it um, because it's as I said still in this technical preview phase but if you're here inside uh, you can um, go to this plugin and then you can activate it by using I think it's here the button below um, so if you're here in the normal thing you have here this copilot thingy and there you can activate it and then you need to basically um, log in and ac uh, also accept all of the telemetry. One thing that I immediately recognize is that GitHub Copilot is especially good at detecting something like boilerplate code. So code that you would write often in somehow a little bit different manner. So for instance, if you're writing a lot of tests, you know that, that usually tests have a lot like these require things and a lot of um, basically boilerplate, a lot of repetition. And GitHub is very good in detecting that. So for instance, if I go here, uh, it will automatically tell me that probably the next line I want to write is 02. I can accept that. Then I want probably to write uh, 03. And here, this is also very, very amazing. It knows that I initialized the game state here with a red player at the middle column. So it already tells me that probably I want to check whether this player is red. And for me, this is mind blowing. I mean, this is really, really amazing. 
and actually writing tests here is amazingly fast using that. So here you see it also knows that it needs to have the blue one. Um, for me, it's absolutely crazy what it detects just out of this. It speeds up writing these test cases um, and it's, it's really a pleasure to use. And it does all that by basically learning what you are writing and putting it into the context of what you already have done. So for instance, I have now written a specific main method and because of the context, GitHub Copilot already knows um, how this will look like. So if I want to do something again, it will here, uh, it will suggest me something that is fairly similar to what I already have written. So in this case, it learned that somehow my main will look like this. And here it says that probably I want to name it differently because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Um, but it's still very, very context aware. So it's uh, really understanding the code that you're writing. But let's challenge the copilot a little bit. So I want to add a signal handle to this main. So usually a signal handler gets written once, once and then you forget how to do it later on. So it's something that you don't need to do every day. So if you want to do it, you usually go to Stack Overflow and look it up how it actually goes. Um, but let's use the copilot for this. So if I say I want to have a signal handler and in this case it already suggests me probably for control C. So yeah, let's accept that. And then I press enter and out of this comment it will uh, do the right thing for me and it will here create a signal handler for control C. Um, which is already really, really amazing. Um, but what you need to look out for is to use the correct um, comments because it's really based on the comments that it does the right thing. Because now I only got the signal handler, but GitHub Copilot is actually a lot more. So if I, for instance, write here signal um, handling for control C, and I do that, and I ask now GitHub Copilot to give me a few suggestions by using the interface, then it's generating a lot more code. And you see it's generating me here, the signal handler, it's generating me the right include, and it's also putting me the signal handler at the top of my main function where I usually want to have it. So I can accept this solution and then probably I also need then to delete the old main function. But here you see that in this new main function, it actually has everything already inside in the same way. So I can just get rid of that one. And now I have a main with a signal handler, which I think is pretty amazing um, given that I really have not given it that much context other than I want the signal handler for control C. This is another example. This is basically my, my dispatcher for the different players. So um, it is basically only the interface class. So th something that gets done uh, a lot in C++ is if you only have an interface class and you want to make it as fast as possible, you use a design pattern that's called um, curiously recurring template pattern. And this one here actually uh, would benefit from it because it's a purely virtual class and it's not uh, instance too much and so on and so forth um, But it's not written in that way. So let's uh, Use github copilot to do it and we say we want a CRTP class um, of this um, connect4 um, Yeah, we name it connect4 player and then we say yeah create me that and here we already see the first line. This is already quite common. It's the template and type name derived. Um, this is just how the pattern goes. But what is completely amazing is now what it does here for me. Because it knows that my usual class, it had something like a virtual move function. And this is where I can use the static dispatch and can um, really benefit from the speed gains if I would apply the CRTP pattern to that. And here, what GitHub Copilot does, it already does it for me. So if I accept it, then we see here that it does exactly that. So it casts this pointer to derived, and then it calls move 
on the derived pointer and I in the derived class I need to implement move without paying for the overhead. So this is really a complex pattern and I'm actually fairly surprised that GitHub uh, Copilot does the right thing here and really um, gives me the right suggestions. So even if I have, let's say, problems a little bit with figuring out the syntax, it is a great help for me um, if I'm new to these kind of patterns and I want to learn something, it actually makes a lot of sense to use a tool like that. I hope I could give you an insight into GitHub Copilot today. I think it's a really amazing tool and given that they are still working on it, um, I expect that it will still get better in the future. So I think it will change the way how we are programming code. Um, today it's uh, far from being a silver bullet from everything, but it's, uh, let's say, the best tool for code competition that is out there. And it still has its quirks and flaws, but as you saw today, it's really a powerful tool that you should start using or apply for the demo and uh, get your hands dirty, um, write some code and really dive into it. Because I had made the experience that over the last few weeks working with it, it's really that at the beginning you struggle a little bit and then all the suggestions make a lot more sense you know how to write that uh, github really realizes what you want to do and after that it really sped up a lot of the programming that i have been doing in the recent days um, so i really enjoy this demo and i'm very grateful that i have the opportunity to join if you like the content please hit subscribe and if you want to keep on watching i guess that right here is a video that you might enjoy um, if you want to check out the code, go to GitHub. Um, thanks you for joining me today and as always, enjoy coding.